Right, hello, welcome to Double Entry Bookkeeping, uh, Accounting for Inventory, or Stock, is what we're going to do today. Um, so this is for my AT Level 3 Bookkeeping Transaction students, but, but good for all accountants. Um, so what are we going to do today? We're going to evaluate the impact of invoice accounting when we have stock holdings, and we're going to see how if we use invoice accounting and we don't really account for stock, we just simply um, account for cost of sales and when we've been have purchase invoices raised, um, we'll see how that doesn't really give a true and fair position of the cost of sales within a year. Then we're going to switch over to accruals based accounting or the matching concept for uh, cost of sales and with that we'll introduce opening and closing stock which we'll have in the extended trial balance and we'll show how that, that works and the impacts of that on the profit and loss account and we'll determine the cost of sales in an accounting period just in case you're asked that question. So we've seen um, in a previous video this idea of how we take our trial balances and we're going to split them into um, statements of financial position at a point in time and statements of financial performance over periods of time. So we've got this diagram here and this is pretty useful to, to show how stock appears. So let's say we stick at the moment, first of all, with invoice accounting. So all that we've done so far is recognize the cost of purchases whenever we've received an invoice. And so in year one, we receive £100,000 worth of purchase invoices, and in year two, we also receive a further £100,000 worth of invoices. Now, let's assume then, though, in the first year, we use £90,000 worth of that, that's um, those purchases. So we actually have, at the end of the year, £10,000 worth of, of stock. That's what it's called, or, or inventory. So there's £10,000 left over. What we've actually used is £900,000. But under invoice accounting, we charge to our profit and loss account the invoices that we've received, the £100,000 worth of purchases. In the second year, we use up all the £100,000 plus the stock. So we used up £110,000 worth of items in the second year. But in the second year, because we've only received £100,000 worth of purchase invoices, we've only charged to our profit and loss account £100,000. So using invoice accounting or cash accounting, uh, we've charged £100,000 of cost of sales in each year. We haven't made any adjustments for stock. But under accruals accounting, we do adjust for the stock. So in the accruals accounting, in year one, our cost of sales is £90,000. And in year two, our cost of sales would be the £100,000 of purchase that we use in year two, plus the £10,000 worth of open stock that we use in year two. So you can see how this is very different in terms of what would happen in terms of our profit and loss in each year. Um, in year one, our profit is understated by £10,000, and in year two, our profit was um, overstated by £10,000. So accrual accounting really is what actually happened rather than only what was invoiced. And so that's why, that's why we adjust for stock. So our cost of sales in the year then is our opening stock, whatever we've had brought forward in terms of our opening stock, plus any purchases that we made in the year, and we deduct off our closing stock from that figure, and that gives us our, our um, cost of sales figure. Now, what is it in terms of our values that are going to be for these closing and, and opening stocks, really? We actually, you know, how are we going to calculate the closing stock value is the, is the key thing. And what you've got here is you've got two methods which we can use. One is the first in, first out method, and one is the average cost method. You cannot use last in first out. So we'll see what happens when, when we get into last in first out uh, as a, and we'll do some examples. So what is first in first out? First in and first out is, assumes that we've got some, we bought some items in there and then we use those first. Then we buy some more items and we use those second and then we buy some more items and we use those third. So as things as things come in, we're always using the oldest item first. That's the, the we sell the oldest item first. So that's the first in first out method. The average cost method is that actually we put it in a big bucket and we swirl them all around and really we're just taking out the average. We always have an, a recalculated average cost of stock all the way through and, and that's how we calculate the a unit price and we multiply it by the number of units we have left and that's the average stock method. Now the easiest way to see this is we're just going to go through some examples which we're going to go through now. The easiest way to work out and calculate the 
or, or to explain how to calculate the closing value of stock is just simply just go through some examples. So what we've got here is we've got a, a, an example of, uh, we're going to do this first in first out method. So we've got some journals in here uh, using the spreadsheet that you should have got used to by now. And um, what I've done is I've chopped down a number of journals to go in. So we've just got uh, some sales and purchases journals in there for them. Then what we're going to start doing going forward is we'll have our extended trial balance uh, journal sitting underneath here. And in this one, I've got a closing stock calculation in here. And I've also put an error of omission just so we can just keep keep practicing those kind of things. So I've got the journals here, which I've posted you know, based on sales and purchases. And we've got an opening uh, trial balance here. So let's just put that into our uh, amounts there. So that's what it would be in terms of our open trial balance. And you can do these uh, individually later on yourself. And we'll post that and those journals to the general ledger there yeah, as if by magic so we now completed our general ledger and we'll put those into our draft trial balance so we've got a draft trial balance and we've got an opening trial balance turn it into a draft trial balance via these journals and uh, the open trial balance so this is where we're up to so far our draft for trial balance balances and we're now going to do the year end or the period end journals so we've got closing stock here uh, it says 800 units calculated using first in first out uh, rounded down to the nearest hundred pounds. So um, first in first out, which means we can virtually discount the opening stock uh, figures. That's going to go straight to the uh, to the profit and loss account, and we're going to deduct and we're going to use the last uh, purchases in here. I'm going to make this not going to make this very hard. If let's say that this was a purchase for 500 here, and then there was a purchase for 500 here. Uh, and that was this was the first one and this was the second one. So this was the last one last uh, purchase that we would have We would take all of this one and we would take 300 of this one, uh, but we're not going to do that uh, There's something that'd be required at this level. Uh, so We've got 800 units at 100 pounds each because that is what we've had here In terms of that's what we bought this last set of uh, purchases for so we're going to have 800 times by 100 which is our value of our stock in our balance sheet. So let's put that in there. That's going to be closing stock in the statement of financial position. Uh, so that's the way that Kaplan uh, like to put it out. Basically, if it was closing stock in balance sheet uh, or just closing stock in there, that's, that's what, we're, what, what we're going to go and put in there. And the other side, the credit, is going to be in our statement of profit and loss or just our profit and loss account. And the reason for that is because it's a reduction in our expenses. So it's money out to the shareholders in future. So it will be a credit. And the uh, the reason why this is a debit, uh, this amount in the balance sheet, is because it's an asset, an increase in the money in item. Uh, and so it's a positive money item. So that would be the debit. So there's our, our debit here, or our, our, our debits and credits here. So we're going to now put that into our adjustments column. So we've got 80,000 there in our debit and 80,000 there in our credit. Okay, and then we've got this other one here, which is just a, a um, an error of omission. So let's complete this now. Yeah, and we paid this by direct debit. It's 120 pounds telephone expenses paid by direct debit. So that will be from the bank. And so we'll have that there. And let's put this in over here as well. So 100 into our telephones, 20 into our VAT, and the bank is a credit of 120. Okay, so that's how we got so far in terms of our extended trial balance. Now let's complete this. Let's move all of these items into the correct columns. So um, buildings is an asset, and so that would be in the balance sheet. Cars an asset, as is fixtures and fittings. The opening stock remember has been used. So this has been turned out and put into our, uh, we've used that when we've been selling it. So it actually goes into our profit and loss account here. So it's an expense in our profit and loss account. A reduction in our money out items to the uh, shareholders in future, so that would be a debit. Uh, debtors is an asset and therefore goes in our balance sheet. Bank is an asset in our balance sheet. Oh, no, sorry, it's not. It would be the net, wouldn't it? So we got that, and we also take off that credit there, though. So that's the amount in our bank account there. There's our petty cash. Our VAT is going to be the net of the, that credit and that debit there. And our creditors are that. And let's put that into our shareholder capital in here and our asset in terms of our closing stock. So that's where we are so far in terms of our balance sheet. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create our profit and loss account in here. 
and then move all of those items, close all of those those accounts out, and put them into the profit and loss account the opposite way uh, into here. So let's go through here. So we've got sales, which is a credit. We got purchases, which is a debit. And we've got our closing stock, which will be a credit. And we've also as well got this telephone that's in there. I think that's now cleared off all of our things. So this gives our, our profit and loss account. So just close this down and balance it up. Being that. And so what we'll now then do is close down all of these accounts over here. So um, uh, credit opening, stock, debit, profit and loss account, uh, debit, um, sales, credit, profit and loss accounts. So we'll do all of those, which will be the, that opposite of that there and you can see that our balance sheet balance is there in terms of our cost of sales if you want to sort of if you've got a question about our cost of sales we'll just do that as an example here so we've got our opening stock which we put to our cost of sales at 90,000 we've got our purchases that we expended and we deduct off our closing stock of 80,000 and so our cost of sales is 110,000 uh, in this in this instance in here and if you want to now do our closing balance sheet, there we go. And we can see we can just produce those now. And opening stock doesn't have a line in. That is, yeah, those are credit uh, VAT there, our creditors there, and then our shareholder capital, which would be the com combination of our opening shareholder capital plus the profit and loss for the year. And that is that and we also should have in here as well oh sorry and our opening stock will be our closing stock oh so there we go and that's that there's our balance sheet balancing not quite sure why that turned red um, it shouldn't have uh, but uh, essentially that's our, our questions uh, and that's for first in first out what we'll now do is we'll do an average cost we're now going to do the average um, closing stock method so the average value closing stock method and what we're going to do here is um, I've now populated Again, four journals, an opening balance sheet, I've created a general ledger, and I've created our uh, draft trial balance within the extended trial balance. We've now got two um, journals down here, and uh, we've still got an error of omission which I've left in, um, and then we've got our uh, calculation. And here we've got to calculate closing stock, 340 units is what, it, what we have as closing stock, and it's going to be calculated using the average cost method, rounded down to the nearest 100. So, we've got our opening stock, here and that's 600 units at 80 pounds each and we've made purchases during the year we made a thousand units at 80 pounds each so what we've done then is we purchased 1600 units and this is how you do it you sort of, first of all work out the number of units that you've purchased in total well purchased and how does the open opening stock work out the total value of those that are items so that is 128,000. and so work out the price per unit so the price per unit is going to be 80 pounds a unit and so 340 times by that is the value of our closing stock using the average cost method so let's put now this into our journal so we've got closing inventory in the statement of financial position closing inventory in the statement of profit and loss and so that's going to be debit in the balance sheet of 27,200 and a credit uh, against our cost of sales in the profit and loss account of 27,200. So that's our our um, stock figure. Let's just complete this this uh, error of omission here. And then what we'll do is we'll put those two in our trial balance. So in our we've got our debtors for our or debit for our um, closing of entry and statement of financial position credit for our statement of profit and loss and then in terms of our telephone we've got that there and VAT here and we've got our bank here okay Ooh, let's just get that in and there's our bank there right so now we're going to complete our extended trial balance so we'll do the balance sheet first so there's our car and there's our fixtures and fittings and now the opening stock doesn't go into the balance sheet the opening stock goes into the profit and loss account so that would go there it'll be our cost in our profit and loss account and debtors and bank and we've got some, oh, 
uh, the bank will be the net, won't it, as well? That will be the net of our trial balance minus this creditor here. If it was a debtor, it would be plus that added that on. There's our petty cash. Here's our VAT. I'm going to take off the debtor, uh, the the, uh, the debit from that. And there's our credit. And we're also as well going to have our closing stock here. So there's our closing stock as an asset. And where oh, is our shareholder capital? Our shareholder capital is there. Okay, so that's where we are so far. Now we're going to do the profit and loss account. So we're going to do our sales here. Sales. And our purchases. And we've got that telephone adjustment that we have. And we've also as well got our closing stock, which reduces the cost of our sales. Yeah, so there's that. And we're going to balance now off this profit and loss account. So we balance off the profit and loss account. So what is the figure that's required to balance this account? That's going to be that. And that's going to be our profit and loss for the year. So how we would do that is we would convert that when we would we go um, credit opening stock debit um Profit loss count, credit uh, or debit sales, credit profit loss count. So we closed all these accounts down to zero in our general ledger, and then we just post that to the profit loss count, and there we go. And that's our our figures there. And let's do the co the cost of sales calculation. So it will be the our opening stock value, our purchases that we added on from here, our closing inventory which we're going to take off, and our cost of sales is that. There. And our opening balance sheet for the next financial period is going to be those items there. The opening stock now will be the closing stock of the previous financial period. The debtors would be in here. And we've got our bank and our petty cash. Our VAT there. And our creditors. And then our shareholder capital is the brought forward shareholder capital in the previous period plus the profit and loss profits for the previous period and there is our opening balance sheet for the next period so that is um, the extended trial balance accounting for inventories using the average value cost method um, now what would happen you might have a question which is saying um, what would be the effect of using last in first out and the simple way to do that is to um, reverse out the journal so if we take out the journal here and then we put in what would be the cost what would be the closing stock if we used and the opening um, stock rate. So here we have 80 pounds a unit in here. So actually there would be no change here using last in, uh, uh, last in first out because the average cost method produced 80 pounds per unit. The opening stock method produced 80 pounds per unit. If let's say the opening stock method was 90 pounds per uh, opening stock was 90 pounds per unit and the average one was 80, then what we would actually do here is we would increase the value in the balance sheet of the asset we would increase the amount that we were deducting off the cost of sales and the credit that we were putting into the profit and loss account. So we'd be increasing profits. So if opening stock value per unit is greater than average cost stock value in the closing stock value, and actually it would be the same for first in, first out as well. If the opening stock value is greater than the closing stock value, then using last in, first out would increase profits. If the opening stock value is less than the closing stock value, using last in first out would reduce the profits. So hopefully that is accounting for inventories. Um, you'll have a whole series of questions now on this to, to complete and practice on. And good luck. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.